have it here. So, for the few of us who actually have retro um, HP logic analyzers with boot disks, then this is for you. So, um, uh, I'm going to cover how do you um, copy the boot disk, logic analyzer boot disk, um, uh, outside the logic analyzer itself. And then also, um, how do you um, put an IMD image file, which is usually the format in which you find these retro boot disks in, uh, how do you get them onto another, onto an empty disk that will actually work. Um, I've actually tried very many different solutions, even, go, even gone back in time with my retro computers to Windows XP, FreeDOS, you name it, different types of copying software. and. Um, I have not really been very successful in getting working disks, but I did find a a solution that seems to work quite well, so let's just have a quick look. So my solution was to get a, uh, a concept or a board called uh, Grease Weasel, and I'll put the links to this in the, in the description of the video, and um, if you want to know how to set it up and stuff, I actually made my previous video was covering how to um, handle image files for Amiga Commodore computers, so then I went a little bit more into detail how to set up. But, but in this video we're just going to use it to um, to do the um, steps we we need to do to support our boot images and um, boot disks. So let's have a look at that. So, those who are familiar with this logic analyzer have probably seen this collection of um, IMD files. Um, and I'll put the link in the, uh, in the description of the video where, where you can find these, these files. And in, in this file here, OS V110 IMD is the image for the boot disk. And as I said, I've used many different software tools and back in time and stuff to try and do this with it. I, I've never got anything to to stick or work. As I said, the, the solution that I'm using with this uh, grease weasel seems to do the trick. So I thought I'd walk through what you have to do with this file to actually get it done. So first what we need to do is we need to actually um, convert the IMD format to SCP and um, that you do using this tool here which is HXC floppy disk emulator. <laughs> it might feel counterintuitive to actually deal with something like this to, to do what we need to do, but that, that's, that's what one has to do. So you download this package and then you unzip it. There's no installation program. And then I'll give a hint in which directory. If you're running Windows 11, um, like I am, then you 64 bit, then um, uh, yeah, that'll be the correct um, application because it, it comes with several different. Um, binary images and they're for different platforms. So I'll just give you a hint where you can find it. So when you start the program then it looks like this. The window is extremely small and you know on, on whatever if I put it on my full HD desktop or the 4K desktop it's, it's just what it is what it is. So we um, take load and then we can select the, the IMD file. And we open that. And then we need to use export. And here we select oh such a long list. We need to find the SCP. That one. So you need to export it as that format. I'll just put it in the same direction. So, now that's done. So, the um, weasel needs it in uh, SCP format because it can't handle IMD. But IMD should contain the same data, data as SCP. So, moving on. So, we're going to um, read the disk into uh, an SCP file or into the SCP image format. I'll also do the same trick here that I'll let it run real time. So you get a 
feeding of how it performs when it's actually doing this operation and how long it takes. It's also the same thing that the drive needs to be working very calmly and systematically. Shouldn't be any retries, no sounds of retry or anything. And the time between the tracks should be approximately the same. It's important that I keep it at real time, because then you can ju judge yourself when you're actually running this. To, does it feel like it was executing at the same speed or more with the same clarity? Done. So now we've um, read the disk, so we want to put it on a, another blank disk. Again, when this is doing this at the con, it's not verifying the tracks that it's writing because there's no way in the SCP format, it has no way of doing verification as far as I understand. Is this going to write? And uh, what you get is what you get. testing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, take out the uh, logic analyzer and um, we'll um, film testing those on um, two produced disks. So one was produced from the image that was downloaded from the network from the internet and the other image was created by taking a reading the existing known good boot disk and then writing it to an empty one. So then um, let's hope they both work. Alright, now we've got the logic analyzer <coughs> and the two disks. 
Let's see if it'll um, <coughs> start. So, um, oops. First one. No, oh, wait, I need to press the button. Uh -oh. Ooh. Right. Well, sounds like it's loading. Let's see that it completes. Can't see the display, so I have to look at my small display. <laughs> it's actually hard to read. Pretty much white, but it sounds good. I actually don't remember which disc is which. So was this the one from the image, or was it from the image taken from the disc? No, it should be. Oh, I have to look. Yes, it's loaded. So first disc works. Sounds good. It's always important to listen to the sound when it's floppy disk drive. You want to hear an even click, click, click. Now it's loading config. Now it should be complete. Yep. So, so that means we have um. One, one um, boot disk successfully created from an image downloaded from the internet and then another image created by um, reading the original or, or one of the boot disks that I had with this and then writing that image to, to the disk. So I, I would say, um, and I've also, this is, um, like I said a little bit, I think I said it already, but this is the, the second time I do this, so the second time going through the same process, so it, it seems like um, the process is repeatable, and that, that you often have a problem with these disk image software, or disk imaging, that, that sometimes it, it, there are situations where it sometimes works and sometimes doesn't, but uh, I think this has proven at least it seems to be repeatable, which is good. Yep. So I hope you found this useful because it's, it has frustrated me a bit that I couldn't um, copy the um, known good boot disk outside the environment of the um, uh, logic analyzer and uh, it's actually kind of cool that one can create an image file from the physical disk and, and store that image file. And I'll probably be storing it in SCP format since the, and, uh, yeah, I don't want to go through the IMD conversion process. And I can't, uh, actually Grease Weasel can't read the images into IMD files either directly, so, so it'll be SCP that I'll use. But, that problem solved, and, and I know that there are other in the same uh, uh, yearly, you know, around the same years that uh, my logic analyzer existed. Lots of those HP logic analyzers and other equipment are using um, yeah, boot disks. So um, th this mechanism I have described here will probably work for very many. Uh, yeah, I would assume it would work for pretty much any of the other logic analyzers using boot disks. So, okay. Um, yeah. See you in the next one.